looking the, the chapter folder itself there's a little introduction to grafting and something about me and without grafting watch that that was made almost two years ago year and a half ago then uh, every page of uh, the book that's information there's a video to watch where I talk you through it try not to fall asleep I try to do it in a page at a time, so they're only like a couple minutes at a time. So, in case you do start to feel some groggy. Uh, let's see, it looks like I've got the video 17 page. Uh, huh. There's one page. In a little different format and nothing showing. Uh, it's showing online. It says a YouTube video. Uh, it would be Chapter A, Lecture 1.7. Yeah. Yeah, it's a YouTube video. Huh. Not showing on mine. That's crazy. Huh. We have this issue time to time. You might even see it on a Mac where for some reason or other these little. I can check real quick. Well, it's okay. As long as you can see it there. If you, if you can't, you know, see it on your Mac sometimes, let me know. Uh, Java has to be updated. Is usually what the problem is. And they don't know why Mac's services to do that. Let's see. As long as you can see it there, I'll just reload it here after class. All right. So you look at each sheet. You should watch the video and listen to me discuss each page of information. Then there's a little demonstration on each worksheet. Scale six is just a really simple measuring. So I didn't even make a video for it. You should be able to figure that one out. Then there's a place to post each sheet. And then there's a quiz at the end. And this is what needs to be done this week. Yep. Now uh, the only question I do have, like we uh, we got to have six hours in and. Uh, so do we need to like, is that just being on Blackboard, we need to be, or just, no. if, if we get the work done that week, you pretty much put it in your six hours? Yep. Okay. And it's probably, for some weeks, it's more than six, you know, as a rule. That was only a little, had a little confusion. I didn't know if it had logged your hours. No, it's on our system, you know, it's just that there's enough work. This course has 90 contact hours in it, so there's enough work for six hours a week, 15 weeks. So if you, if you, that is not screen time necessarily, you know, if it's just a few minutes there of listening to the lecture, you know, maybe uh, 30 more minutes plus what you might hear on Monday, on Mondays. Uh, some, some chapters more, okay? Then, it's just up to you to get, you got to get an hour in here after a class meeting, an hour of lab, and then however you want to do the, the other four hours, okay, it's fine. But there's enough work, six hours of work minimum, to do uh, a week. And uh, in some, you know, you may go faster, you know, maybe move at a faster pace. 
and see how it goes. Okay? Follow? All right. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk just a little bit and go over uh, what you're gonna see in the videos. I'm just gonna briefly touch on. Okay. And uh, so in the the very first section. The introduction. Here is uh, just introducing you to the engineering graphics or drafting. Very uh, brief introduction. And then what uh, engineering documents have in them and engineering drawings. And although it's all mechanical, the architectural uh, follows essentially the same procedures where you have details and assemblies. So if it's a floor plan and then elevations, then you're going to have section views and parts list or building material list to go along with that. So in mechanical, it's parts and then assemblies details and assemblies. So read all about that. Then we jump right into what sketching is and the rules that we try to follow on that. Just basically the types of sketches. Just a little overview of some manual drawing equipment that you might run into or want to use at some point. Some people like to uh, Try it out, you know, and enjoy uh, making some drawings doing that. But uh, we don't use these tools in the uh, drafting departments anymore. So basically, you know, just a very light touch on these, and really don't test over them or anything. You're not required to know all these tools anymore. Uh, so essentially, a, a good circle template. Later on, we'll I'll give you one of those, uh, one of these erasing shields, so that you can erase things without destroying too much of your drawing. Then uh, drawing papers, we cover that. Uh, they're standardized. That's still good stuff. We still produce paper drawings that are used out in the shop or out in the field. They uh, haven't gone totally digital on that yet. At the construction sites, you know, it's pretty hard to get the builders and uh, contractors, you know, to huddle around a, an iPad <laughs> and uh, try to use one of those out on the site. So large printed uh, drawings you know, three foot by four foot sheets uh, is pretty typical. And then in the mechanical, manufacturing, industrial, there's more digital there, you know, and uh, in the production inspection area, it's, it's going more digital. But there are still paper drawings out in the shop that are used quite a bit. Then just one sheet about measuring and measuring scales and uh, I touch on that uh, describe those to you in detail then there's a antiquated page about the computer drawing and modeling the dates and stuff are good of course it's just when this book was put together computers were you know they're sh showing the 1984 <laughs> computer for some reason um, I don't think the book is quite that old. Uh, I've since lost the uh, on mine. Yeah, but when it, you know, when it was first printed, uh -oh. I don't know what the first printing is. I don't think it goes back to '84 though. But anyway, yeah, I uh, I used one of those. <laughs> Although it did have a 
it did have a hard drive in it, uh, 1985, the IBM PC, and a 20 megabyte hard drive. So, and very lousy graphics. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they were, graphics were horrible. If you had color, they were pretty chunky. And then uh, if you had monochrome monitor, you know, it was better, but it's monochrome. Uh, yeah. So, and, but it has a little section about rapid prototyping, which we have that machine been doing it for 10 years. Uh, it's called 3D printing now. And basically using the, the CAD model that we developed, the 3D model. So you'll do the, the worksheets in addition to learning basic information there. And you do these worksheets. And on this sheet here, the very first one, scales dash one, essentially I just want you to write next to each dotted line what the measurement is and use the unit after the measurement. So this is millimeters, so it'd be mm. And this would be, they're all going to be the same, of course, you look down through here, except for millimeters. You need to convert what is one inch equal to and uh, look that up, find out what it is equal to and write that in millimeters up here next to the dotted line. Then these will be in inches. This will be inch and decimal. This is half scale. So on this, you read over here on this side, your fractional measurement. Okay, so those are fractions. And then this way is your inches. So this would be two inches and uh, four inches and so forth, but it's in inches and fractions. Okay, and then architectural, uh, it'll be in feet and inches. So essentially, your answer in there is going to be written like so. So whatever kind of feet it is. So it's a little repetitive and a little uh, Preschoolish almost, in a way, you're going to be thinking, but it's essential. Basic stuff, our basic tool. I was in our architect's office uh, Friday, and you know, architect, these architectural technicians, been doing it for 10 years, and he still has one of these on his desk, you know, out actively measuring drawings. So it still happens. Uh, then the scales two is all in metric, and what you do on this, again described in the the video, take uh, you could take one of my business cards if you want. I have lots of them. A little card stock is easy to work with, and uh, basically you'll use. Uh, this measuring scale here to measure lines over here. Okay. And uh, wherever this, uh, so there's two things to do, or three three things to do on here. Tell me what this, each measurement is in millimeters, this in centimeters. So be careful where you put the decimal point. And then all these different measurements here that are referenced, you'll just simply take and mark L1 on a piece of paper or a card, then come over here and find out where it is on millimeters. Okay, so that's your scale instead of actually using a matrix ruler. Okay. Right? Then this one here, number three, essentially. Uh, this just gives you an example of how to read the decimal inch scale. Every little tiny division is 0 0.02 of an inch or two hundredths of an inch. So then you just read these. Tell me what it is. Watch out where your decimal point goes. 
then the same deal to measure, mark off L1 on a card or piece of paper. You should come over here and find out where it is on the scale and write your answer in. Um, print your name as neatly as possible. You haven't had lettering yet, but on each one of them, print your last name is good enough. You got a short last name, so it's quick. And then the date. All right. And then four, it's a little different. This one is uh, fractional inches and uh, also half scales. So here's your measurement here. I'm not sure why they're running these all the way down, just so that you can see how they compare, but there is nothing to do relating these two together, except that uh, this is the zero on this scale. It increases to the right, and then it also increases this way. So when we measure using an open divided scale, your fractional measurement is measured here, and then your whole number is measured this way. So that's a quarter of an inch because there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight divisions. This is representing a whole inch. So that's a half inch, that's a quarter inch. So that would be five and a quarter inches at a half scale. And then also, here's the inch. It's a quarter scale. Not quarter inch equals a foot, but quarter scale. So each one of these is a inch. Up here you just read what the fractional measurement is to the lowest common denominator. Okay, so it's on a uh, mid-length line, and that's not a 32nd. Each little tiny mark, every division is a 32nd, but that would be probably a 16th. And then these would be quarters. Let's see. No, actually, that's on an eighth of an inch mark. That's on a 16th. That's on a 32nd. Right. And again, this has gone over in detail in the videos. And then architectural, you got inches this way and feet this way. So you measure your inches first, figure out how many inches it is, and then see where the other termination is to figure out how many feet. So you just got two problems to do on that. Be careful that you're counting increasing going to the left, your fractions or your inches. Once you've done a bunch of these architectural measurements, then it's, it, it's I'll get used to it. Oh, yeah. And, and you won't see them again for quite a while. We just do this little touch of it, and then it's not really used very much. We got one assignment that's a floor plan. Uh, or you might use it on there. But we're basically going to use a scale grid on it. Then the last one that I don't have a video on, it's basically the civil engineer scale. Uh, everything is in tenths. So depending on what scale is needed, so determines what each little mark is worth, what it's equal to. So this is one inch equals 10 feet. So if that's 10 feet, then each little mark is a foot. So that would be 14 feet. That would be 32 feet. So then you just tell me what those are. Then here's another one. That's one inch equals 20 feet. And that's how it looks on the engineer scale. And uh, each mark is worth 20 feet. Okay, so there's 20. I'm sorry, each mark is worth a foot, so there's 20 feet, because 1 inch equals 20 feet, so that's 18. That's 53 feet. So just don't forget to uh, put, put the foot mark on it. And this one's a little more difficult to read, a little finer measurement. 1 inch equals 50 feet, so they're at the 50. That's your 1 inch equal to 1 inch right there. So you just count each mark as a foot. 
and it's pretty simple. It is. It's. I wish we just used that all the time instead of fractions. But yeah, yeah. fractions. <laughs> Ever, they're not going away. No, no. I think the crew feels that they're staying. <laughs> <laughs> I love math. I mean, we're all. Yeah, I know it. You're you're uh, you're the norm, so don't feel like you're uh, uh, different than anybody. I mean, most people, you know, really don't uh, care for fractions. I don't either. You know, it's just I've done them so long. You know, I think in fractions. But Thomas Jefferson, President uh, Thomas Jefferson tried to get Congress to change in 1822 or something to a metric system. He pushed that through and failed. Otherwise, we'd all be metric today. So, and then another attempt was made, I think back in the 70s. And uh, so we have dual systems to deal with all the time. And so, in all of these, uh, just put my name on the bottom and the date on every one of them. Yep. And, uh, you know, try to be as neat as you can right now. You know, with your numbers and your letters, just try to be as neat as you can. And we'll do a whole chapter on lettering. And you'll think you're back in elementary school, only worse. I could probably use it up. And then, you know, I'm, we're not asking you to get up to a point of, like, you know, a calligrapher, you know, a master a letterer or anything. Uh, I just want you to have a good lettering hand for when you do need to make a note on an existing drawing uh, or your work that you're doing. That's neat and legible. That way you can understand what you've done. Also, it's a uh, it's kind of the hallmark of uh, what a drafter is. You know, kind of a carryover from the the forward drafting days. I agree, but you know, you hand off to a client or to a, your boss or something. A, sketch of what you want to do or a note about something and it's neatly neat lettered you know and not a bunch of hand scratching it just takes on the aura of being correct and being very technical it just does I mean I know that sounds kind of different but uh, at least uh, you know but you don't make it like had students in the past that for some reason or another they always printed everything and they were like, you know, sixteenth of an inch high letters. Just like I'd give a written test and it would be I'd have to almost use a magnifying glass to read it. It was amazing. It was yeah, I don't write small. Incredible. And then others are so jumbled and then we don't teach a whole lot of penmanship or anything or some Schools don't even teach handwriting anymore. So you need to have some because we there's just something different going on when you're able to sketch something out and capture an idea quickly and uh, you'll be able to put a note with it that's legible or dimension it that's very neat and legible. Okay. Makes the revision work easier down the Little time on the front end saves a whole bunch of time later. <laughs> okay, I think I did everything I want to do. Still sounds like something you want to do. Oh yeah. <laughs> Wasn't gonna change my mind. All right. I'd rather do this than go to English tomorrow. <laughs> well, you'll be learning some skills that are, uh, you know, well over 150 years old been around for a long time and it's the foundation. It is the root foundation of technical drawing. 
representation. 